Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. It is the that time of the year again. It is a hockey season, the start of the season. It is the time to get pumped, time to fire up, and the time to get completely stoked as our Philadelphia Flyers season is starting. And this is our NHL team preview for our very own Philadelphia Flyers. And I am joined by both of the wonderful Pirlo Wisdom, a.k.a. Steve Duncan, and the wonderful Steel Flyers. Please check us out over on steelflyers.com as well as very shortly you can already check out steel's great episodes over on spreaker so please check that out as well but guys as we get into it right away as we know always when i have other people on my first question for you i'll start with pierlo on this one what are your pearls of wisdom your first two inklings that you think about when you think about our very own philadelphia flyer um i just Nolan, man, Patrick Nolan, he's back. Nolan Patrick is back. Uh, that's just absolutely huge. Um, then I'm very excited to see Carter Hart get his first Vesna this year. So, <laughs> yeah, he's going for it right out of the gates. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, those are my two big things, man. I'm so I'm pumped to see uh, Nolan Patrick be the story. He gets the uh, What's the one at the end of the year for the comeback player, the Masterton Trophy? Masterson. And Mass, yeah, and uh, and and Car- Kata gets the Vesna. I'm stoked for that. That, that. That's what I'm watching for this year. Those are my big time predictions for the Flyers. Besides the fact that they win the division. Ooh, okay. But I didn't that, actually predict that's, that. That's I three. I predict. I predicted Washington, but I'm 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 predicting i'm wrong okay there you go (laughs) (laughs) well well you've never been wrong so so you're predicting that you're wrong now so huh (laughs) yeah yeah i've been explainably inaccurate before Uh, though that's Uh a good word explainably Explainably inaccurate inaccurate. okay (laughs) okay so okay. my two things for the Flyers would be this. Uh, I can't disagree with what you said, Perlo, but I really am excited to see Mr. Oscar Lindblom pick up right where he left off last year. Yeah. Okay. Um, he was one of the leaders in points uh, with only playing a couple of games. And, man, I'll tell you what, he has looked really good in camp. He's – Looked, he even came back to play in the playoffs a little bit, and you know he he looks like he's a little thicker, and and, and I'm really excited to see him play on the line with anybody. <laughs> okay, I don't care where he plays in the lineup. I don't care. Okay, yeah. I'm just excited to see him play. You yeah. also mentioned it too. Obviously, Nolan Patrick. I think that's going to be the story of the year. Uh, I I really think that the revenge tour is going to be massive for him he just looks like the number two pick i mean like like what well, this is what we expected right yeah. i think we're gonna get it this year and 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 of course kind of hot kind of hot so i'm looking for the flyers to come right out of the gates on all cylinders flying around like mid-season form, okay? And I'm expecting them to do really good things right out of the gate. So that's my first two takes on the Flyers. Yeah, uh, part of mine for a surprise, guys, since we already touched on Limblum and Patrick, would be I think with how A.V. said he feels he has to make the team from the jump and how he thinks for now he should be on the roster from how well he played in camp. I think Frost at a certain point is going to have more of a level on the team, and somebody like a Raffle who's in the last year of his deal might see a little bit less time and be more of a platoon and an out guy rather than a steady uh, starter at a certain point. Or if JVR struggling, he could be the other option there. But I do think Frost will eventually come in and have a good impact and make an actually pretty good full rookie season impact since he never had a first full season yet and uh, actually uh, have a pretty good impact on this team this year. So that's one of the big things for me. And the other thing is I think in some capacity when he comes back, he's not going to be active for tonight, but I think 
Ghost now with the wanting to bring the power play back. You got Gustafson, I think, to have Ghost go with Provy and have Gus go with the other yep. protection uh, D, whether that's going to be Braun or Hag. I personally think it would probably be Robert and Braun would be the depth guy at that point. Yeah. But um, we'll see what happens there. And I think that was all putting us in a good spot to really improve the one main issue we had, which was the power play. So those are my two uh, inklings. And also the the last thing on the power play is Fairby's in his next season, and he already saw success. He's got stronger, put on more muscle, so he's going to see even better success uh, this year as well. So now I'm going to turn it over to Steele, who has some greatly planned questions for Pirlo and I to be able to <laughs> embark on answering. So I turn it over to Steele right now. All yours, buddy. Thanks, my man. So listen, you touched on it right there, okay? You said about Joel Faraby, okay? And because of the great information from OMB Podcast and the great information from Jamie Baskow and the great crew of Flyers Nitty Gritty, which, by the way, you guys got to check all that stuff out, man, for sure. Got to check them out because they got the stuff in the know. But they said about Joel Faraby, he's going to be on the second power play, right? That's his projected lineup yep. for tonight. OK, so based off of what you said and based off of that information now, is this going to be the year for Joel? I'm going to start off with you, Joe, because you touched on it first. Do you think this is going to be the year where we're going to see him take that next step and be that player that we all think he's going to be? Uh, yeah, I think 100 percent because he's talked about putting on that weight, which was the extra mile. Once you come up, you have to adjust to the league at a skill set level. Then you have to figure out how you have to adjust at a physical level once you're in the league for a little bit of a period of time so you can figure that side of it out. And I think that's exactly what he did in the offseason. All the interviews he's had so far, he's talked about adding more um, physicality to his game due to the via having more size. And he had five points already in the 12 games of the playoffs. So that's a pretty good first yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, season of a yeah. playoff stretch. Uh, yeah. So I think he is going to continue to build on that. I see him having one of the more productive uh, seasons on the team. And just like being on the second power play unit, he's probably going to be on the second line if they do end up doing the Limblum, um, Couturier, and Connecting. Exactly. Wow. So he'll be in your top yeah, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's exactly what I'm going to touch on. Perlo, give me some wisdom on that. What Do you think this is going to be a breakout year for, for Mr. Joel Farabee? Uh, almost assuredly. I, I don't know how much weight he's put on. Hopefully he's got about a I think five team. to seven pounds, I believe, is what I've been so hearing. He's playing from. about 173, something like that, this this year. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I've like I've been – talking about Farabee for quite some time now. Uh, what I tend to do when I like players like that is I tend to want them to play higher in the lineup and more minutes than they're probably ready for. Because, <laughs> But I just love Joel Farabee. I love his game. I think he could be easily a 50, 60 point player, winger. I mean, he put up 24 points as a 20 year old and a slight one at that. Yeah. He just finds ways to get the puck. That's what I love about Joel yeah. Farabee. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what and we we yeah. so need that. He find he and not yeah, he's scrappy, but, but his creative. stick work his stick work is fantastic. Yeah. He can strip yeah. the puck off of somebody. He knows when to play scrappy and when to play the skill game to get the puck away from the opposition. And that's what I really love about him. And the cool thing is, I hear uh I hear that he might be playing with Hayes this year up the middle. And uh, those two guys on that line, um, they play similar types of games. Agreed. And they had good chemistry last year when they played too. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I think is going to be happening here is they're asking Faraby to shoot more this year. They're going to be asking him to shoot, shoot, shoot. I think he's going to oblige. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're I mean, going to probably put Giroux on the on the left side, and that's yeah. just pass to Faraby, pass to Faraby, pass to Faraby. And I love not? his and I love his shot. Yeah, I freaking love yeah. his shot. So, so you guys, yeah, I'm pretty you guys darn excited about Joel Faraby. I, yeah, I'll make a prediction agree. that he gets forty. Or in a, what are we doing? Fifty six game season this year. Yeah. I'll say he gets thirty one points. Okay. Okay, I, I I was thinking about anywhere from fifteen to twenty goals from him this year. Well, that's pretty huge. Yeah, huge, yeah. yeah. If he's playing on second line up there like that, especially mm-hmm. like with Hayes and all that, I I, I can see that. I, I can only see that. Thirty-five goal pace in a regular season, so that would yeah. be big. 
That would be yeah. big. You can also set him up how Kane kind of goes to that porch to blast his one time or on the power play. That might be an idea they're thinking of for him on the power play to pass it across the ice and just have exactly. him blast it away exactly. as well with that nice shot he has. And obviously his playmaking ability is very good as well. So uh, you can't forget about that. He has a that's probably the thing people actually talk about more. Be, and then his shots, the yeah, second right. that people don't realize is actually as good as it is. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, great shot. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So now, okay, we talked about Joel. Now let's talk about another player that, although he's not going to necessarily make an impact on the first game, but you touched on it earlier when you said in your first little opening spot there about Ghost. Okay. I agree with you 100%. I think Gustafson was brought in to be that second power play offensive defenseman on the second power play. Okay. Now, it's unfortunate we're not going to see Ghost tonight, but he, everything that I've seen about him has been positive. He's supposed to be, you know, up on his skates, playing really well, doing really good, blah, blah, blah. I, I, we don't know what's going on with him right now, but I think that he's going to be a major contributor to the power play moving forward. And that was probably one of the reasons why they didn't get rid of him. What do you think was the reason why he wasn't moved? Or do you think it was because they had this plan for him all along when they brought in Gustafson? I mean, kind of give me your take on the whole ghost situation. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Perlo on that. Okay. Uh, he wasn't moved because nobody's going to take that contract. That's the reason why it wasn't moved. And now they're just now they're making the best of it. And hopefully for his sake, he makes the best of it. I think he's going to go in and out with with Robert Hag, and uh, to or whoever's just not playing. Right? If uh, Justin Braun's not playing the top of his game, then it'll be Braun or whatever. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, I think he'll be going in and out of the lineup with Robert Hag, and he's going to have to compete. And that's really what it comes down to with Ghost, right? It's Okay, you didn't put up the point production. Uh, you didn't do this. What I didn't, where's the compete, dude? And now if you're injured, then you're injured, whatever. I can't say anything about a guy's injured. If the right. reason why he can't compete is because he's injured, then whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. But be, regardless of what it is, until that compete is there, he's not going to be a regular in the lineup. And, yeah. and uh, that could be confidence, as people have, mentioned, have said. Um, I don't know exactly what it all went all i know is on the ice ghosts did not look like he was competing far too often last year and that's got to be there this year so if it is if he can find that compete in him or if he's back healthy again uh that would be absolutely enormous for us absolutely enormous um it, it would it'd be everything if we could get him back to the 51 point guy i personally didn't think he was all that bad defensively considering he was a 51 point guy a lot of people did he yeah, was you like can krug. overlook some of that stuff though he was like krug you know yeah, like yeah. there was nothing wrong with that he was on that projection to be a krug like right. player and if we can get that again wow yeah. i mean that would be fantastic i'm with you yeah yeah no i'm with you so uh lay it on me there professor joe what what what's going on here with ghost give me your uh, give me your take on ghost um i think when he came back last year in the regular season i think that's when he was obviously still injured he had another procedure he came back for the return to play they said he looked quicker on his skates but obviously he wasn't going to be unless if he blew your tires off that much part of the realm at that point cuz you already had a team in place that did it put that together and put you in the position you were coming into the return to play so you weren't really going to log jam yeah, throw yeah, that yeah. off unless if he really performed but he was getting more healthier then and then got the most healthy with whatever most likely a covid related thing right now uh hopefully not in any bad way and it's just something minor going on with ghost but his knees look better. I think he's going to be your top power play guy. To, and then Gus is supposed to be your second. That allows Provorov to not have as many minutes in the whole entire game as well. And it kind of lets everything fall into place more. The one thing I disagree with Pirlo on is I think Justin Braun is kind of the odd man out at a certain point this year because he's old. I don't think there was a reason to sign him for two years to begin with. I think that should have been more of a one-year uh, keep him around if you want to help him mentor the young guys thing. Yeah, Because I yeah. feel like Hag is a guy that has already shown me he's – a defensive, a guy that blocks shots and plays well in the defensive zone to just hang back and protect a guy that plays like a forward 
sometimes as a defenseman in Eric yeah. Gustafson, because on yeah. top of that, all of our lines are set up to play pretty good defensively as well from the forward position. So somebody, usually each line, actually, when you look at it, how they might go in, has one pretty quick guy on it. So someone will probably get back with Hag, too, and then yeah. you go from there. So I think Braun's probably more just because he's 34 and not in future plans. You're odd man out, and then Hag might not be in your future plans for the longevity, but for now he is, and then you're going to have trade value to them yeah, yeah, by yeah. having them in the most where Braun's not doesn't have the best trade value you're just going to get pick lower round pick yeah, yeah. I, I, no I agree with you 100% man I I did not agree with the Braun resigning uh, I I thought that was a, a a huge waste of money, but you know, look, I'm not the general manager, so you know, uh, what what do I know? Um, I do agree, though. I think Braun's going to be the odd man out once Ghost is back, because I think that gives us a a two prong power play attack where we have that offensive defenseman who can jump up in the play and can be maybe the quarterback of the of the power play and or you know take over those kind of duties and things like that so i i do look for ghost to be a much improved player this year it does seem like he's bought into what's going on with av okay and it seems like he's now you know like like i think we're going to see exactly with what perlo pointed out is i think we're going to see the compete this year i think with the removal of the injuries depending on what's going on with this little issue that we have going on right now but based off of the injuries i think he's going to be a, a, a that more closer to the ghost that we saw 2 years ago than what we saw last year and the year before okay so that that's kind of how i feel about ghost for this year Perla, you said it in the beginning, and and we kind of all all say the name with with great enthusiasm, Kata Hot. I'm going to go with you, Perlo, on this, and I'm going to agree 100. percent I think this is the year for Vesna, for Carter Hart. Okay, Joe, do you agree? Disagree? Yes or no? What do you think? I agree. I agree. There's a good chance on our podcast for Disciples of Ed. I did um, yesterday with the other guys. I said pr- definitely top five. Um, you have a lot of other goalies to compete with here. And uh, Connor Hellebuck, obviously. You have yep. Vasilevsky. Yep. Um, Harry Price, if their defense, like some say, they think is going to play a lot more calm, cool, and collected this year. If that does happen, then who? to have the better overall numbers and you won't have people stupidly talking about how he didn't have a great season when he actually did, but that's just not here nor there. Uh, so there's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's different um, people that can be uh, competitive in this thing. And then you also have to watch the other youngster in Vancouver. They added to their defense. I just did the video for them. They really helped bulk up their defense uh, with that. in Nate Schmidt, he could step up and be in the top five for the Vezina as well. So, Okay. Obviously, Perlo, you you agree. We we both agree. I guess we're all kind of. I, I think he's going to win Vesna. Uh, from what you're saying, Joe, you think he's going to be in, in the voting? I think he's going to definitely be in the top voting. I think this yeah. year, especially in a 56 game stretch, yeah. some goalies might have ridiculous stats because you're not going to have that. The you're going to yeah, be able point. to have the. Um, platooning if you have great backups and most teams with these goalies I will mention have at least a solid backup so they're not going to be overly taxed and they have if they get on a hot stretch they're not going to maybe have that 10 game stretch in their yeah. season where they have those 10 off games or five mm. to six off games you like can't have season. those this year the, yeah. the, you really don't have that there's also just a lesser percentage chance that happens in a 56 game season right so some guys stats might be even more OP'd this year than yeah I got you Perla, what? Why do you? Call, I mean, look, we, you already said it. You already predicted it. You think he's going to win the Vesna. So why do you think he's going to win the Vesna? I mean, with guys like Shosturkin out there, guys like, you know, uh, Vasilevsky out there. I mean, even Hudobin, once he gets back, could potentially be. You know, I mean, there's plenty. I mean, if Bob comes back and plays to the stellar Bob that we all know, you know he's Vesna guy right there. I mean, so why do you think Carter Hart? Um. Well. For the, the overall team in front of them helps out a lot. Uh, AV system yeah. helps out a lot, and um, so I, he's going to be on a on a winning team. And a big reason why that he's on a winning team, losing Niskanen and putting up huge numbers helps a lot. These are things that come into play when picking a goaltender that is 
the best goaltender in the league. Because usually it's really tight, right? Like yeah, Connor, yeah, yeah. Hun- Hullabuck won. Why? Because his defense was poor, and he put up great numbers. I mean, in spite of that fact, absolutely. And that would be the again the biggest. You mentioned it: Vasilevsky, Hullabuck, and Carter Hart. The other thing is, the people that make these selections love their young guys. They they love to celebrate. The league loves to celebrate their young stars. So if it, if there's a fifty fifty out there. The the uh, they'll err over to the uh, younger goaltender to get his first Vesna. It, it, it sells the game well and all of that. So now, if there's you mentioned Shesterkin, if Shesterkin goes lights out and the Rangers make it, yeah, then that, probably no matter how good Card Hart, <laughs> Carter Hart does. Yeah. Then you can't, and and he mentioned Demko. Uh, that very well could be if he played, he did like he did in the playoffs, for as long, you know, for as many games as say Carter Hart does, and Vancouver makes it. That could be the guy. I just think overall that um, he's always done better than I even thought he would. You know, he he's always improving at levels. And I always look at players like that. We've talked yeah. about this with Philadelphia play, Flyers draft picks for a, almost oh, yeah. all of them have been outdoing themselves. Yeah. So I'm putting him there because I don't know what his max is. Mm-hmm. I, I he's he's probably going to outdo anything I can imagine. Yeah. In which case, he'll get the Vesna this year. Um, if Demko does as well, he might not get it because he doesn't have the legs that Carter Hart does. Carter yeah, Hart's been in it for a while. And now is kind of earn respect around the league where Demko, if they give it to him, they could say, well, he had to go at one good year. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's why I'm really, there's a, I put a, uh, yeah, that's the thought I put into all of this where I put him on the top of the list to get the money this year. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I'm with you. I agree hundred percent. I think, I think Kata Hot's going to be in the discussion. He's going to be in the top three. I'm, I think he's going to win it. I just think he's going to win it. I, I be, and the reason why is because of the team that's going to be in front of him is going to be a huge difference with some of the other teams that are in front of some of the other goalies, okay? Um, especially at the Rangers, they're still trying to put together a team, and that that might not work out. Same thing with Carey Price. Look, if if the team doesn't work out real well, then eh, you know maybe. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's going to be one of those things. But I do like Carter Hart for the Vesna. All right, man. Here we go. We got. Puck drop in an hour. Any it's predictions? In an hour? Wow. In any predictions for tonight? I, I do have predictions. Hold on. Are we allowed? Can we do it, Joe? Do we have time? Yeah, we can do uh, predictions. We'll just throw it in the end of the video because then people will just stop watching this and they know it's a team preview. And okay. It's for the first All game. Right. But one last thing I did want to say before we go in our Yeah, please. Is, uh, Fletcher Hextall, especially coming in for Fletcher with our drafting and Fletcher keeping that same drafting system, added a guy in Lazinski who already went into our top 10 from uh, from the hockey news per report. Boom. And they added a guy like Andrea who looked a little bit outmatched in the World Juniors, but he's 18. He's going to get to go back for a second year next year. That's the year you're really going to look for him to be able to take a step up. Uh, Wade Allison had ACL issues, but now that he's going to be able to come back, you're going to want to see what he's able to do. Jay yeah. O'Brien's killing it at Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they built a good foundation for the future, not just the present. Forster also did not look too outmatched in yeah. our scrimmage, and Zamula yeah. looked really good. Really good, yeah. So our uh, – our team is building for the future, and it's unfortunate Ratcliffe was injured to see what he could have looked at in our yeah, strength. Yeah, His massive body and uh, banging people around. And yeah, 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 yeah. He's a couple years away, but I just love seeing him up when you have a chance to see. But uh, we have a great foundation here, and that's uh, I think uh, everything's going to be fine because even if a couple guys get injured, I said it before, Flyers have depth. Uh, Zamula, if one guy gets injured, seems like he's already ready to kind of step in yep. and play calm, cool, and collect it out yep. there. And, uh, and Mark exactly. Friedman is definitely definitely a guy that's calm, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, usually when you lo- lower your number, that means when he chose three, that usually means that you're more s- thinking you're going to stick in the NHL because usually the high numbers, if unless if you want to keep it, are for those guys. Yeah. 
first get up, they just throw you some random number. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, Perlo, give me some final thoughts on on uh, on on the Flyers for this year before we get into predictions. So give me your final thoughts. Um, my final thoughts. I I'm very it's such an interesting team because there's so many things that can happen and cannot happen. Uh, my final thoughts on I'm, I'm I'm kind of on the edge of my seat for a few things and you mentioned one with Lindholm, Lindblom and uh, and uh, Patrick um, to see how they're going to do that it's so huge for the, for our, our for, for the Flyers to be for those guys to be huge. Um, since people like Boracek kind of step down a little bit and allowing the Farabees to uh, take a step up. Um, it's an exciting time to be a Philadelphia fan, Flyers fan. Um, I'm really, you know what I'm actually most interested in, to tell you the honest truth, and I know we kind of poo-pooed this signing. I'm really interested to see if Gustafson can come back and be what he was in Chicago. Um, that is really exciting to me to be able to, because if he, I saw a Gustafson when he was in Chicago, yeah. that looked like he was going to be a fantastic defenseman. Yeah. And I don't know what happened in his travels there or what yeah. was going on, but maybe he had personal issues or whatever the case may be. Maybe the, to, the, it's the right tonic with, uh, AV there. And if he maybe. can get back to that. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, this team is going to be absolutely incredible. So that could potentially be two defensemen that have 50 points or more, right, with Ghost and and with Gustafson, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to probably say that most of their points are going to come on the power play, obviously, um, because that's where they're going to yeah. try to play. You know what I mean? So yeah. my final thoughts on the Flyers this year, this is the first year that I've been so – like I feel like – I'm in high school. Like, I'm getting ready for that first date, kind of. Like, that's how excited I am about this year because there's so many stories. You got the Carter Hart story for Vesna. You got Oscar Lindblom coming back from cancer. You got Nolan Patrick coming back from migraine disorder and lighting it up. Right. Yeah. You got hopefully a JVR resurgence, hopefully a ghost resurgence. Right. And then exactly with what Professor Joe said, all Fletcher did was pick up right where Hextall left off and continue to stock the cupboards with great depth and great players and great people that are going to be able to step right in and be that next man up. I did not think that wisdom looked out of place on that scrimmage at all. No. AV highlighted that too in the post game. They asked exactly. him about exactly. my, my namesake. Yeah. Yes, your yeah. namesake. See, that's why I brought that up. See, I thought he played very well. Okay, people compare him to uh, uh, Wayne Simmons a little bit yep. because because Zimmer kind of took him under his wing, and you know, and that's gr I would kill to have another Wayne Simmons. Are you kidding? I don't care how tall he is. I don't care. I'll take that mm. all day. Yeah. But that's the thing I think is going to be the thing. We got Sam Moran switching over from from defense to forward, being that muscle now. Okay, that's five stories right off the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I'm so excited about this year. There's so many things going on, plus the fact that it's 56 games, so many games of hockey on so many different nights now. It's like hockey 24/7. How? how can you go wrong with hockey 24 seven, right? Okay. <laughs> that would be my yeah. final thoughts on this team. I'm, I'm excited to see them come out of the gates. I, I don't, I don't know if they're going to win the division. I didn't pick them to win the division, but Oh boy, Oh boy, Oh boy. It's going to be tight. Yeah. It's going to be a really good division fight. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I think uh, a best way to do it might be if we do a short, just five, 10 minute pregame prediction video separate from this. So it's not at the end. We're at 30 minutes okay. uh, now. But um, this has been our NHL team preview for the Philadelphia Flyers. As always, we really appreciate you joining us. Please like, comment, and subscribe. The gritty days are back, and the Flyers are back anytime, anywhere. The NHL season's back. Please enjoy the hockey. I get to say that again. 
That's my favorite line to say. Enjoy the hockey. Have a great and safe, pleasant day, everybody. Peace out. Liars, baby. <laughs>